Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Blanchett and I am the Curator of Education for the High Point Museum. And today I'm going to be reading you one of my favorite childhood books. Uh, it's a series called The Gymnasts and it's the first of 22, so hopefully you'll actually be able to check it out when you come visit the High Point Public Library. Chapter One, Lifestyles of the Limber. I can't believe I let you talk me into this, I moaned to Cindy, my best friend. I already feel sick to my stomach. Fear can make you car sick. It's a proven fact, maybe not scientific, but it's proven. I'm the proof. Don't be sick in my car, said Cindy's brother, Tim, with a laugh. Tim was driving us to gymnastics class. Maybe it was his driving. He just got his license, but I didn't think his driving was that bad. Tim was in that brief stage that all of Cindy's older brothers had gone through when they were willing to drive us anywhere. I clutched my stomach. I like to see Tim squirm. Cindy laughed, <laughs> but I wasn't exactly joking. I was on my way to my first gymnastics class in a long time, and I wanted to go back home, maybe back to bed. Cindy and I took gymnastics classes when we were little. Some adults laugh when kids talk about something we did when we were younger. They think it's so cute, but I'm 11 now, and I quit gymnastics three years ago when I was eight. I would have been perfectly happy to live the rest of my life without ever falling off a balance beam again, but Cindy wasn't. Recently, a new gymnastics academy opened near us, the Evergreen Gymnastics Academy, which advertises itself as shaping the future, beginners through elite. Well, I wasn't exactly a beginner, and I sure was an elite. Academy made me think of lots of little miniature cadets acting like wind-up toys, flipping in the air. But Cindy got it into her head that our entire friendship depended on me going back to gymnastics with her. I really felt scared. I'm always scared when I do something new. I'm not chicken. I do it anyway, but I'm scared at least a little. This is going to be so great, said Cindy. Mom checked out the new coach, Patrick. He's young. He just graduated from the University of Colorado a couple of years ago, but he was already coaching at a club in downtown Denver. He's cute. And he's looking for girls with experience. That's us. That's you. I can't remember any of the moves. Then I giggled. Well, maybe some of them. Remember the time I was showing off on the vault and I slipped, landed on my head, and did a perfect headstand by mistake? Yep, said Cindy. You claimed it was your yogi bear move. Don't you remember how much fun we used to have? She pleaded. You've got to give it a second chance. You've got the perfect body type for it. That's a polite way of saying I'm short. Short is good in gymnastics, but I'm not exactly skinny. I'm not fat, mind you, but I did hear my uncle once say that I was built like a fire plug. I didn't take it as a compliment. I have straight black hair that I wear in a short pixie cut with little pointy bangs that are supposed to be a bit punk, according to the guy who cuts my hair. I don't look punk. At my best, I can go for cute, an 11-year-old short pixie who happens to be shaped like a fire hydrant. Cindy and I are like Mutt and Jeff. Cindy is having her second growth spurt. She's about five inches taller than me and would like to stop growing. She's worried she'll turn into a giant. We have often talked about making a trade. I'll take a couple of her inches and she'll take a couple of my good grades. Getting good grades has always been easy for me. Growing hasn't. Cindy's whole family is athletic. She has four older brothers. Cindy's not just the baby of the family, she's the only girl. Cindy wants to be a gymnast because it's the one sport no one else in her family does. Cindy says that coming from a big family makes you want to stand out. I wouldn't know about that. I'm an only child. I do know that I love Cindy and her family. There's always a lot of laughing going on at her house. Cindy's so enthusiastic about everything that it's easy for her to talk anyone into anything, including talking me into going back to gymnastics. When I quit gymnastics in the third grade, it was because I was secretly afraid I wasn't good enough my parents let me quit. They thought it wasn't my thing. Besides, they thought it was taking up too much time. 
I didn't fight them when they suggested I had better things to do with my life than hanging from rings. Part of me was really excited about trying it again. Maybe I would turn out to be better than I thought. Maybe I'd be really good. But as we got closer to the academy, I got more and more nervous. Tim pulled into an alleyway behind the Evergreen Mall. Where is this place? I asked. Keep going, said Cindy. We drove past the public part of the mall down a road that had nothing around it except a few cottonwood trees by a dried up stream. I was right, I groaned. This is the end of the world. I'm going to be abandoned here, endlessly trying to swing from a stupid bar. Maybe I can sue my parents for letting me take gymnastics again. Maybe I can sue you. You know what, Lauren, asked Tim. You haven't even imagined the worst part. What's that? You could like it, said Tim. You could love it. Cindy laughed. Yeah, she'll probably love it. But will she tell us? I laughed too. I promise if I love it, I'll let you know. Yeah, says Cindy. You know, Lauren, she'll be great at it and she'll love it, but she won't tell me because I was the one who talked her into it. Cindy, you've got to understand that some people are not meant to live life upside down. It's a proven fact, said Cindy and Tim in unison. Who needs brothers and sisters when you have the Jocket family? I laughed. Well, it could be fun to do it again, I admitted. I wasn't that bad at it. And this time we've got a chance to make a real team, said Cindy. That's the whole point of this place. We may get to be on a team. We'll compete, we'll go around to meets. We may even travel around the state. What if you make it and I don't? No, I'm sorry I said that. I'll love watching you from the sidelines. No, I won't. If you make the team, I want to be on it, I babbled. You will, said Cindy. I think Patrick puts everyone on some sort of a team. I wonder what the uniforms look like. What am I talking about? I hate competition. That's a lie, said Cindy. You get good grades, and you had that grin on your face when you beat Matt Davis in math. I know, I admitted, but it's not sports. Lauren, don't knock it till you try it, said Tim. Sports are great. They're great for the Jocket family because all of you are jocks. Maybe I could join a couch potato competition. You're no couch potato, said Cindy. I know, but maybe I could become one. Give it a chance, said Tim. I can just see you and Cindy at the Olympics, up close and personal. TV reporters will come and interview me. I'll tell them the first time I drove you and my sister to gymnastics class, you almost got sick in my car. Then I dropped you off and you became a star. I'll say, yes, I owe it all to my best friend Cindy and her brother Tim. It's an amazing story, ladies and gentlemen. Two girls, one short, one tall, friends since kindergarten. Which one wins the gold, asked Cindy. We stand on that little step together. It's a tie. The first tie in Olympic history. Of course, you almost pushed me off the step because by the time we're in the Olympics, you're six feet tall. The world's tallest gymnast. And you're the world's fastest talking gymnast, said Cindy. Right, said Tim. The little gymnast who wouldn't shut up. Just then, a maroon Corvette tore down the dirt road and passed him going about 60 miles an hour. That's one cool car, said Tim, putting his foot on the gas pedal and trying, unsuccessfully, to catch up. The maroon Corvette pulled to a stop behind a huge gray warehouse with high windows around the side. Above the door swung a small sign that said, Evergreen Gymnastics Academy, with silhouettes of kids doing gymnastic tricks off all the branches of the evergreen tree. There was nothing else around. The warehouse was just a gray cement cube that looked like one of those out of the way places that the TV detectives are always going to be alone to meet the villains. This is where the elite meet and greet, I asked. You've got fast company if that kid works out here, said Tim. A black girl got out of the passenger side of the Corvette. She was wearing a leather bomber jacket with a white bunny rabbit fur color. <clears throat> she was wearing a She was wearing a leather bomber jacket with a white bunny rabbit fur collar and a jeans mini skirt and cowboy boots. Maybe I will take some classes after all, said Tim. Stick to football, said Cindy. You sure you don't want me to go in, said Tim? 
No, said Cindy. No way, and you don't have to pick us up. Lauren's mom is doing that. I looked up at the Evergreen Academy sign. It sure didn't look like much of an academy. It didn't look like a school of any sort. My mom works for the Denver Board of Education, and my dad's a high school principal, so even more than most kids, I've been around schools all of my life. In a way, it's weird because my mom is like my teacher's boss, and they're always a little bit afraid of her. It sounds cool, but it isn't. One thing about gymnastics, I wouldn't get any special treatment because of my mom's job. This gymnastics school wasn't what I pictured. Even the sign was a little funky. I liked that. We watched as the elegant black girl opened the door to the warehouse. Then I opened the car door. I took Cindy's hand. Why do I feel like I'm six years old and starting my first day of school? Cindy giggled. Remember when we started first grade and I wet my pants and you were the only one who didn't tease me? She asked. That's because I was scared too, I said, just like I am now. I am too, whispered Cindy. Then we both laughed together. If we were both scared, how bad could it be? Come on, I said, suddenly feeling a little brave. Let's go check out the lifestyles of the limber. Sarah Blanchett, and I am the curator of education for the High Point Museum. And it's the first of 22, so hopefully you'll actually be able to check it out when you come visit the High Point Public Library.